Okay, hi and welcome to the next in this um, series of screencasts on programming for psychology and vision science. So in this screencast we, we're going to be looking at how we can save data from our programs. So the objectives are to first to be able to check whether a file exists already on disk. So this is important so we don't actually accidentally overwrite um, either our or, or somebody else's um, previously saved um, data. Then we want to understand how we can best represent data to facilitate saving it and loading it from disk. And then finally we want to learn actually how to do the saving. How do we save data from Python onto a file on disk so then we can use it um, in some other fashion. Okay, so the typical purpose of running an experiment is to generate some data that we can use to um, address our question of interest. So it's therefore very important that we're able to uh, store the jar data that gets generated by our experiments to a file on disk. Let's go to Python, to Spider as usual. Okay, so the first important thing to think about is to uh, think about the file location that we want to save it to. So a common sort of scenario is to uh, save the data from each individual uh, session. So it might be um, a given uh, subject performing a given repeat, maybe on a, a given condition. So we'll end up with a file name um, for, for where we want to save that data. So it's important that we uh, check that this file doesn't already exist. So it can be very frustrating to have um, had a, a bug in your program so that you um, run a participant through an hour of study then you realize that the whole time you are overriding the same set of data so you don't actually uh, collect the data from the full hour. So the best way to get around that is to um, right at the beginning of the experiment, as soon as you've worked out what the file name is going to be, check whether it exists already and um, alert the user if, if it does because it, it's likely that that's um, something that's unexpected. So we can check whether a file path exists by using a um, function called exists. So this is um, part of the OS package. So OS stands for, for operating system. So let's just for example say that we've decided that our um, file name, our path for the data from this particular experiment is going to be p1000 xp cond1 rep1.ts so that's going to be our file name. So what we want to do is to check the variable data path exists equals os.path.exists data path. So os.path.exists is going to um, return um, a Boolean value that is true if data path does exist, so if that is already a file and false if not. So we can see that by looking at the help here. So test whether a path exists. Okay, so let's see this in action. Print data path exists. So if we save this and run it. Okay, so we can see that it's returned false. This is because at the moment this file here does not exist. So let's make it exist. So um, this doesn't need to have anything in it, so let's just save it and in the same directory as where we've got these code, we will call it p1000 oops, 1000 underscore xp cond1 rep 1.tsv. Okay, so now we're sort of creating this file. Now, this data path, we've just created it. Um, just for example here, if um, you're actually using in this in experiment, it would be as if this was created by your program. So now we're checking does this data path exist and printing the result. So let's try running this again. Okay, so now you can see this has changed to true. This is because this file does already exist. So th this is a problem. So what you can do What's a, a useful thing to do is to use a conditional. So have if data path exists. 
So this will be executed if it is true. We can use this function called sys.exit and we'll give a message. So sys.exit quits the program, so nothing after this will get executed. And we can give a bit of information. So we'll say file name as a string, then we'll add the data path plus already exists. All right, so you can see we've used this exit function in the sys package, which we need to import. Okay, so if we save that and run it, Okay, so you can see now the user's got an informative message here telling them that, hang on, this file name that you want me to save it to in the end actually already exists. So I'm going to quit now, we're not going to go any further, and that's a, a good, safe way to, to write, your, write your code. Okay, so you've, so you've worked out the, the data path, the file doesn't exist, so you're ready to um, collect data for your program. So it's important to think about how to organize your data in your program so that you can uh, represent it in a way that's easy to store on disk. So maybe the, the best way to do this is in a, a tabular form. So this is in a form where you've got um, rows and columns. So as an example, um, say your experiment has 10 trials, where each trial has a grading at a particular orientation, say um, vertical or oblique, and what you're recording is whether the participant pressed the left or right arrow key in response on some particular trial. So one way you could organize this um, data, so, so a good way to save it on disk, is as a, um, a tabular format with 10 rows and two columns. So each row is going to represent a trial and the two columns are going to give the grading orientation and the response to that particular trial. So let's have a look at an example. So we'll have some, some way of storing our data. We're going to store it in a list. And we're going to loop over our 10 trials. Now we're going to append to our data. So we're going to add a new item to, each, to our data so that overall our list called data is going to have 10 items because we're going to go through this loop 10 times. And we want to add it another list and what this is going to do, this, in, this list we're adding now will act as if it's the columns. So remember the first one we wanted to do was the orientation. So let's, let's make it be random between 0 and 180 degrees. So that'll be the first column. Second column is going to be whether they press the left or right. So let's, let's make it be random just for our purposes here either left arrow key or the right arrow key. So using this random.choice is going to randomly select one of these values. And we close our list, close our function. Okay, so now we've used the random functionality here, so we need to import it. One more thing we're going to import is a package called pprint. This stands for pretty print. It's just a way that we can um, show our data um, in a way that really uh, demonstrates this tabular organization. So rather than using print as we would have done before, we're going to use pprint.pprint with data. Okay, so let's walk through this. So we started out by initializing an empty list so that we're going to fill this up with the data from our experiment. So now we're looping over the trials. On each trial, we're going to create a two item list that has the orientation and a response. And we're going to append this to our data list. And then at the end, we're just going to see what this looks like. So let's save and run this. Okay, so you can see this tabular organization now. We've got these 10 rows and two columns where the first column is the orientation and the second column is the response. Right, so this is a good format, this is an, an easy format to save on disk. But one thing we might want to do before we do that is uh, convert these strings here corresponding to the um, button presses into uh, numbers. Because it's often easier to, um, stay, to save on disk things that are coded as numbers rather than as strings. So let's add another variable here called coded data. And we'll initialize it to an empty list. 
Now we're going to loop over our data. So for data row in data, so now for our, our 10 items in the list, we're going to loop over that each time, assigning it to this variable data row. Now we're going to do a conditional if data row one. So remember the um, second column is index number one. And if this is left, we're going to set it to one. Then we can use an elif data row one equals right. We'll set it to two. All right, so now we've changed this um, response button column from left or right to one or two. So now we append a row to our coded data, data row. Now let's pretty print again. Now this time the coded data, so we can compare. Okay, so let's go through this again. So I've made a new empty list that's going to handle our coded data. We're looping over each row in our data list. We're looking at the um, second column and checking if it's left, then we're changing it so it's number one. If it's right, we're changing it so it's number two. And then we're adding it into our coded data list before printing them. All right, so let's look at what this does. All right, so you can see in the output here, let's try and resize it. All right, so you can see that the this, this first section here, this is from our first pretty print, this is from our second. So you can see that the first column here is unchanged. So 29, 121, 29, 121, and so on. This second column here, every in instance of left has been replaced by a one, every instance of right has been replaced by a two. So this form of coded data now makes it really easy to go ahead and save it onto disk. Okay, so now let's let's go ahead and change our our first example here. So rather than recoding it, let's just make it be numbers from the start. Okay, so now what we want to do is actually save it to a file. So there's a lot of ways you can do this. The one we're going to use here is to use a function as built into NumPy called save text or save txt. So I need to import NumPy, import NumPy as np. Now we need to do np.save.txt. Okay, so now the first argument here is going to be the file name. Let's save it as p1000 um, exp cond1 rep. Let's call it, let's just call it run2.tsv. Okay, so that's the file name. Now we need to give it the data. And finally, we're going to provide it with something called the delimiter. And we're going to give it backslash t. So what this delimiter means is how, how do I separate the columns in the file? So the default here is to have a space. So each, file, each column will be separated by a space in the output file. But we're going to make it be a tab character. So this is this special um, string here, backslash t. So this is why we're calling it TSV, it stands for tab separated values. Okay, so now let's close our function. We can save that and run it. Okay, so it's gonna run through, it's gonna save that file. So let's see if we can open it. Change the file type. Right, so we can see there, we've got this run2.tsv that we just saved open it up and we can see that we've got a file with 10 rows, two columns with our data. It's in a bit of a, an unusual format um, just so that it can store it. You can see that we've got here 211211, 21111 and 551931, 551931. So you can see that we've been able to uh, save this into a, a way that we can store it on disk. We've got this information preserved. And just to verify this further, 
we can have a look at how we might um, load text from our file. So we can load it again, let's call it um, loaded data equals, so we use np.load text this time. Again, we give it the file name, so exp cond one run two.tsv. Okay, and we need to tell it the delimiter. So we'll tell it f slash t. Okay, so now we've loaded this data back in. So let's use this pretty printer again. And I've loaded data. Now, when it loads it, it's in a format that of a NumPy format. So let's convert it into a list using this toList method and save that and run it. You can see that now, this first time we've generated it, we're printing it, that's this data here. We've saved it to a text file. We've then loaded it back up and what we're printing out in this second section is the data that we've loaded. And you can see that they, they match up. So we've been able to, to preserve this data by saving it to disk, then we can load it back up and have it available to us again. Okay, so returning to the objectives. So the first thing was we wanted to be able to check for the existence of files on disk. So this is just a good sort of safe coding um, way to do things to stop us overriding things that we don't mean to. Then we looked about how we can organize our data in this tabular format, so rows and columns, to, so that it makes it easy to save things to disk. And finally, we looked at the actual mechanics of how we can um, actually go about saving a file on disk. Okay, I'll see you in the next screencast.